chapter eight is all about the command line. Um, I realized I deleted the little part of the slide that said learning objectives, but uh, the general idea is the structure of bash commands, referencing directories and files, reading text files, moving and copying files, and then moving and copying files to and from servers, and then writing files. And so, um, bash commands have a general structure of command, and then there are flags, and flags can have their own arguments. And then there's the command arguments. And so the command is what you want to do. The flags and flag arguments are options for the command and options for those options. And then command args are arguments to pass to the command. And so if you wanted to list files in the current directory, so I guess we, in this case, we'll specify the directory. The bash command to list files is ls. And so in R, let's say we're doing list files for the .github folder and we're doing all files is true. Our command is list.files. The flags and flag arguments are all files equals true. And the command arguments are .github. Then in bash, the command would be ls, which is list. Dash a means all. So that's the same as uh, all files. And our command argument is .github. And you can see that we have the same four, four things between the two of them. And something to note is that bash will give you the current directory and the parent directory when you list things out, but they're not, neither of them quite technically exist where you are currently. They're just sort of properties of where you are. Um, and then long commands are split onto multiple lines with the trailing backslash. So this is a really, really long command. Um, in the chapter, Alex has like an actual command split onto multiple lines, but rather than dissect each part, I thought this was a little bit more fun. Yeah. Uh, those come up in GitHub Actions, and it is so easy to miss a slash on a line and yep. wonder why the heck the action isn't working. So, yeah. <laughs> it's frustrating. But <laughs> with directories and files, I've sort of tried to distill it down to where am I and then what the equivalent reference is. So where was I born? is the slash and that's like your your root directory it's the farthest back you can go what town do i live in um it's there's not really an easy way to access your current mount point you just sort of have to know what drive you're on where do i live so that's your home folder with the tilde where am i now your current directory is a dot and then where was i just before where i am now if you skip around this isn't quite true but your parent folder is dot dot. So if you were a file, if you were <laughs> slash r for ds, do for ds, cohort one, chapter eight dot rmd, your file system root is the slash, your drive is r for ds, your home folder is do for ds, your folder, so your room, if you were this file, would be cohort one. And then there's you, chapter eight dot rmd. And so if we revisit the where am I table, where was I born, slash, what town do you live in, R for data science, where do you live, DO for DS, where are you now, cohort one, that's your house, and then where were you just before where you are now, that's your house, again. <laughs> um, and so if you have a sudden urge to see the world, you can change directories <laughs> using the cd command. And in this case, you start at your house, which is r for ds, do for ds, cohort one. And that's like, that's your bedroom. Um, <laughs> and then if you wanted to visit your cousin in cohort two, you would change directory and you go up a level. So you would go up to the uh, do for ds, and then you'd go back down to cohort two. If you wanted to visit your second cousin in the advanced R cohort one book club, you would go up to DO for DS and then up again to R for DS. 
and then back down to advanced R and then back down or down again to cohort one. If all of a sudden you've gotten lost and you don't know where you are, you can use an absolute path instead of a relative path. So in this case, you just need to spell out the whole, the whole thing instead of using your dot dots with the relative path. And let's see, did I, nope, I did not make an oopsie. Okay. So <laughs> you start with your, your root and then you've got your, your mount point your home folder, or I guess this would be your second cousin's home folder, and then you're going to their room. If you want to stop by the hospital where you were born because they have great grilled cheese sandwiches in the cafeteria, you change directory to the root folder. And that one, in theory, you could do relative, but it's almost, that would just be a lot of dot, dot, slash all the way up. So it's usually easier to just do CD slash and then if you want to take a quick short shortcut back to your room, you can do change directory to your home folder slash cohort one. And so a lot of the times people will just do this because you don't need to necessarily go to a specific folder in your home folder. And any path with a dot dot is a relative path and only works from your current directory. So if you were to take this path and then go up to let's say here to slash, this would not work anymore. You would have to use this version instead, which is the absolute path. If so, way back here, we dissected the dot GitHub folder. And so if we go check that out in the GitHub workflows folder, we have this prcheck.yml file. And using cat, which you may recognize from R, it will print the contents of a file. And so this file says all of these things. And then let's say you just want something specific. Linux offers a pipe similar to that of R and other functional languages, where you take the output of this, pipe it, and give it to this as an input. And so if we wanted to find the name of the workflow branch, let's say this is a very long YML file, you can cat the output, which will give this whole big print, type it, and then grep branches will just return the first, it will return any row that has the word branches on it. And you can just use regular expressions here. If you had a line that said branches twice, it would still only return that line once because so long as it matches it, at least once it will return. And let's say you wanted to just show the first six items in our current folder. This should look pretty familiar from the first bit where you're doing ls-a to get everything. And then you're piping that output to head and you're, I think head in bash usually returns 10 items. But in this case, we just want six. So we can specify dash n, which is our number flag, saying we want to use a number of lines. And then our flag argument is six. And that gives us the first six items. I did notice as a quick aside that list.files and ls-a will list things in a different order. And that I think mostly just comes down to how systems sort things. Um, bash returns the current folder and the parent folder as items, like I said, way back when. So that's your dot in your dot dot. If you want to, let's say you're this file again, and you want to move or copy something. So let's say you're remodeling at home and we're going to, we're going to remodel the kitchen. And the RM command will remove something with options to do so recursively or to force it. If you do recursive and force it, you have, you are likely to have a bad time if you don't specify exactly what you want to do. Um, I have made that mistake several times and it's never a good time. No matter how good you think you are at writing bash commands, just maybe not. Do you know the uh, Toy Story 2 
um, RMRF story? Yeah, basically all of Toy Story 2 got deleted because of this. And then they happened to have, someone had like happened to have taken home backup files recently. And it was like, I think it was one set of drives and they ended up having to drive it through like San Francisco rush hour in their station wagon or something. It was, yeah. Sorry. And I was trying to find, I, I searched real quick and I, you know, I'll have to look later, but um, I, I had heard it was uh, malicious that someone had aliased like CD to RMRF, something like that. Um, oh. But I, in a quick search, I didn't see that. But I have seen people, you know, that is, RMRF is very dangerous for sure. Yeah. I think when I did it, I was trying to delete. I had done something to my music folder, which was like 800 gigabytes of music. And I had a bunch of music that I wanted to delete that had been randomly assigned numbers at the beginning of the file name. And I wrote this like carefully crafted uh, grep statement. And then I was like, grep this and then delete those. And I did something wrong and ended up deleting all 800 gigabytes instead of the like, the probably 10% like of files that were offending. But yeah, no, apparently Toy no. Story 4 has a uh, car with a license plate RMRF97 as an homage to when they deleted Toy Story 2. I, I still anyway. haven't seen, seen Toy Story 4, but- I haven't either. You can copy or move files or remove direct, or make and remove directories with make dir and rm dir. And then um, a quick note, you move or copy from here to here. Um, I don't really know. It wouldn't really make sense any other way, but that's how you do it. So if you were remodeling your kitchen, and you want to move everything out of the kitchen into a spare room, we'll move um, from your home folder, kitchen slash star, and that will catch everything. And then we're moving that into the spare room. For whatever reason, if star didn't catch everything, um, which I guess if I'm going to try and do this real quick, just for the sake of it making more sense. So star won't catch things with a leading dot. Um, oh, I went back a slide and all of my work is gone. That's okay. So pretend these have a leading dot in front of them and they're hidden files. Uh, star won't move them, but that's okay because you want a new stove and a new fridge anyways. So you're going to remove these kitchen appliances. And you can pass remove multiple, multiple items, so long as you have your flags first and we don't have any, but you can pass it multiple items and it will remove those. You can then demolish the kitchen by removing that directory. We're going to make a new kitchen with make dir kitchen and then move everything back from the spare room into the new kitchen with another move command. So move home folder, spare room, slash star, move it into the kitchen. And that's nothing crazy. There are some neat flags for move. Um, there's verbose. So dash V is especially nice because then you can see what it's actually doing at every step. Um, and that's. I found that one useful when copying large numbers of files because otherwise you don't know if it froze or what it's doing. So having it just print everything it's moving is convenient. I think it does take a slight performance hit though, but nothing too crazy. If you have server files, it's pretty similar, but moving things as one big file has much better throughput than many small files because you don't need to allocate space for each individual file. You just do one big one and then let the server unpack it. So if you are sending someone a care package, you can send them individual items or one big box. It would be easier for you. And I think they'd appreciate it a little bit more if they got one big box rather than like 10 different like individually packaged like chocolate bars or what have you. But 
the tar command will pack and unpack tarball files. So packing and is the same as creating. And it's this command. Um, Alex does note that you'll probably have to Google the tar commands every time you use them. And that is, from my limited experience, that is true. You'll, you'll do it. But um, you have your archive name and then your files, which can be a folder, a directory as well. To unpack, you also use the tar command, but with a different set of flags. And then you pass it the archive name. To get to actually move things to and from the server, you can use SCP, which is secure copy. And it's sort of a combo of SSH and copy. And Alex didn't really go into it, but it's one of those things if you Google, then you'll you'll see and you'll be able to figure it out. Not too bad. Um, I guess one key thing I totally missed in all of this is if you don't know how to use something, I'm just going to use this. Let's say this is my terminal window. You can type man, which stands for manual. And then if you do like man tar and then hit enter, it will print out the help page for everything. And it will show you all of the options and all of the whatever's. A lot of the times, I found the man page is kind of difficult to read. And I usually prefer Googling and then finding a condescending Stack Overflow answer that <laughs> tells me everything I need to know. But um, it, I guess to each their own. So, and then I guess some of the commands can be slightly different depending on platform or age, but they, they are quite stable, all things considered. Uh, sorry, the beverage. So when you want to write a file, you can use touch to create a file. And so if I wanted to create file.txt, I would run touch file.txt. If I want to write a line, I can use the caret a single caret, and that's similar to pipe, but it will write to a file. So everything on the left-hand side will get written to the file on the right-hand side. And then the double caret is also similar to pipe. Ooh, that, that's an I. But it, it will append to a file instead of writing. So this one will overwrite anything that is already there, whereas this one will just append. So if I do touch file.txt, echo is essentially just print. So if I echo this goes in the file to file.txt, my first line will now say this goes in the file. And then if I echo this also goes in the file, and I'm going to append to file.txt, my file now says this goes in the file. And then there's a new line that says this also goes in the file. Uh, there are command line text editors such as VI, Vim, and Nano that work directly in the command line. Some are easier to use than others. Um, I have found Nano to be usable, whereas VI and Vim are sort of unusable for me. And, oh no, dang it. Uh, to, that's because there are steps needed to exit Vim that are not necessarily the most obvious, where you hit the escape key on your keyboard, and then you can type one of these options and make sure to include the colon. So to write and quit, you do colon, write is the W, and then quit is a Q. And then to quit without having made changes, you can do colon Q. And then if you have made changes, but you don't want to save them, you need to do colon Q um, exclamation mark. And that will force it to quit. But otherwise, it will harass you and go, hey, you made changes. Are you sure you want to save? And you'll get yourself into a nice little loop. So <laughs> I used to be really good with VI. And then I didn't use it for many, many, many years. And I forgot all the shortcuts. Yep. VI, that is, that's its whole thing. That when you know the shortcuts, you can like navigate through files really quick and you, you know make uh, batches of changes and all kinds of fun things. You don't know the commands; it's completely incomprehensible. 
Um, I'm I'm working on. <laughs> I'm trying this new program on my server and it doesn't have a GUI. It's all just like a absolute ginormous YAML file. And I'm writing that on my machine. And then I'm going to do everything I possibly can through a GUI so that I don't have to try and use any of the text <laughs> editors. And I, I will lose my mind. But it's OK if you don't remember how to exit Vim. No one does. And that's why there are a lot of memes about exiting Vim. <laughs> so um, this was a quick sample from the first page of Google. I'm not sure that the pages of Google would ever end if you search for memes about exiting them. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I can read these out loud. I guess I, I'll do that because they don't have alt text. But um, this person said, I've been using Vim for about two years now, mostly because I can't figure out how to exit. Uh, someone else said, I first struggled with exiting Vim 26 years ago, and someone replied, keep trying. I'm sure you'll find your way out one day. Um, and then there's the expanding brain meme <laughs> that says colon WQ. And then below that, it's kill all Vim. Below that is alt F4. Below that is press X button on the terminal window. Uh, below that is sudo shutdown dash R now. And below that is someone just unplugging the computer. Um, I think I've used the first, third, and fourth <laughs> options. So that's, yeah, it works though. Um, there's the Willem Dafoe, <laughs> you know, I'm something of a scientist myself when you finally exit Vim. The Boromir one does not simply exit Vim. And someone else, uh, Bad Luck Brian, tries to exit Vim, deletes home directory. Oh. Not quite sure how that one happened, but <laughs> I, I would believe it. So that is, like I said, not too, nothing too crazy. It just takes a little bit of time to get used to. So it's. It's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be. It's just one command to learn. I mean, yeah. for exiting. There, it, the problem is you don't, you can, it's hard to see the utility until you've gotten really deep into it. Um, I think it, it, like, it's a lot like, um, like the arguments for data table are very similar to the arguments for VI or Vim that, yeah, it's un incomprehensible until it isn't, and then it's like faster and better, but um, just depends how much you're working in text files and need to have, you know, uh, ability to jump around. So yeah. I don't know if you guys oh, are yeah. interested, but I have a little game I made <laughs> in college about learning bash commands. So I'm going to stop my screen share and then share the new window. I can find it. Okay, so can you see my my terminal? Yes. Yes. Okay, cool. So <laughs> I I'm going to change my directory. This is my home folder, Gus Lipkin. And then this is my computer name. But I'm going to change my directory to documents, GitHub, and Lark. And I guess I did not. Oh. There we go. I had a leading slash. There we go. So don't change directories with a leading slash. Um, and now if I wanted to look at everything, I want to list it out and look at everything in that folder and do ls dash la. And then in order to run my file, I need to do dot slash. So my current folder slash lark dot sh. And that gives that launches my uh, shell script program. And so if I want to view the readme to learn about what it is we're doing, hello and welcome to our game. Um, this was a group project. But you are a cat newly adopted by Gertrude, a crotchety old cat lady who loves nothing more than yelling at kids on her lawn and tending her garden. However, lately some birds have invaded her flower patch and are eating them. She's tried putting out bird feeders, but to no avail. She and her longtime companion and cat, Maximus, have adopted new cats to try and curb the bird problem. Uh, we hope you have fun, Gus, Kevin, and Matt. 
And so we've already unpacked the tarball into our home directory. Well, not quite. We, we unpacked it into our current directory um, and we've started playing. And so if we hit Q, we can quit. And then if we start playing, um, I do not have a save folder already. So I'm going to hit no. And then we can fix that by making a new directory. So if we do make dir saves, then um, it's now created, I guess you can't quite see this in the background, but it's now created a saves folder. And if I tell it my name is Gus, cat number 10, you are in charge of feeding yourself because it is your job to hunt the birds that eat my flowers. I have nine other cats just like you, so I don't care if you starve. If you want to eat, you had better work hard. If you survive for two weeks, I might bother to learn your name. Fond regards, Gertrude. And uh, you're a cat, so you can press Q to pretend you aren't listening, because that's what cats do. So we're going to hit enter to continue. And this is our first day, so we'll start the tutorial. Um, every day you can choose a cat to talk to and ask them to list their services. If a cat finds a nest, they should pounce by narrating their actions. Try looking around for nests on different trees and branches. You can move by changing your directory. If you're having trouble getting onto a certain branch, try changing the permission mode. You can give yourself read, write, and execute permissions. Make sure you specify what you want permissions for. If another cat tells you there's a nest on a certain branch, try checking to see if it's a hidden nest. You can also check all of the location's properties. You can also try going to the bird bath to drink water or wait for a bird to stop for a bath. And so if we talk to, let's see, if we talk to Maximus, then he says, what do you want, peasant? And I can try <laughs> talking to him and he'll say, why should I waste my time on meaningless chatter with you? And now I'm, we can look, I'm in this folder. This is my save folder and I'm currently in the garden. And so if I want to look at all of the trees around me, I can do ls dash la. And I see there is one tree with these permissions and it is this big, which is 96 bytes, I believe. And so I can enter another command or I can skip and so if I were to change directory to tree one, then I'm climbing up to tree one. I can check everything <laughs> again. I see if there's a branch that's the same size. So if I go to branch one, then I can check. Oh, there's another branch. And now there's a nest. And if I want to see what's inside the nest, I can use cat nest, and there's a bird. Hooray. <laughs> so now, now there's another day. And if I want to go to the bird bath, uh, this aquatic garden attraction offers water to drink and the potential to catch a dumb bird. I can drink or wait for a bird. I wait for a bird. Hmm. <laughs> I can catch a bird. And stalking <laughs> and I missed and the bird flew away. <laughs> and so if I if I wanted to go back to the garden, I think I can do CD. Ooh. Uh -huh. So when I wrote this, we hard coded all of the bash commands you were allowed to do. Right. Because the program itself is written in bash. It was when we got the assignment, we didn't immediately realize that we could choose to not write it in bash and <laughs> It probably would have saved us a lot of trouble. <laughs> but, um, nope. see, all right, so I've, I've made it back up to the tree. Check can see if there's anything else. I don't see it. If I go back up again, I'm in the garden. And then um, there's, it's still just that one tree. And so if I skip, I can end my turn. Um, it is possible to just lose the game, I, but um, this is, it's my fun game about bash commands. <laughs> if we talk to Snickers, we can ask for assistance. 
and get nothing apparently. Mm -hmm. You want something, and I think, mm -hmm. ooh, what is it, cat four maybe? All right, there's one of them you can trade with, and I don't remember which <laughs> one. Um, oh, this one will quiz me. What is his favorite thing to do? Oh no. Word. <laughs> um, this, I think it's, oh God, those sophomore years, so like three, three years now that I, I, I made this game and then haven't touched it since. I just, I think that you had uh, one failure in your game that you typed Gus. It should have given you like, you start with five birds or something. There is, ask your name. Um, <laughs> I mean, if we, here, I guess we can dissect the, um, where is this going to go? <laughs> oh, I opened it with Sublime. Okay. So I'm going to share the actual like text behind the game and we can learn more about bash commands that way too. So every bash file starts with pound bang slash bin slash bash. Um, and then I have the file name. There are some options here for changing the text. You can create functions and you can see I'm using echo for um, all of the all of the printing. <laughs> and then I have this whole save file that I, it ended up sort of being a byproduct of the fact that I needed somewhere to store the user's current progress. So if I was like, I already have half a file, half a save file, I might as well just make it a whole file. Um, I think I'd much prefer R to bash. <laughs> but there's, there's all that fun stuff. So you can see the blinking and I'm setting the text to blink and then printing stocking and then blinking or back to normal text. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's a, it's, it's a low level like C or something, it, just like uh, the modern one, right? Which batch? Yeah, batch. I think. Yeah, actually, I don't know which one's lower level. Because see, you can you could you could like specify like, um, like here's local and global and pointers and stuff like in memory, right? In memory very intensively, but in Bash, um, it's more like programming languages like Python or R. At least this is what I what I what I know mm -hmm. about. It looks like Bash is written in C. Just to, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> once you get like, think, everything like, is written in C. Right. Yeah. Yeah, technically. <laughs> like R is written, right. I guess early yeah. R was an evolution of S, which was just C. There's right. uh once, there's once you once you go far back though. There's Fortran. Oh, yeah, there was Fortran. Um, I haven't looked at the uh, like any any bits of R source in Fortran at all. I I still haven't quite figured out R C plus plus. So trying to go farther back would be it doesn't quite make sense. Um, there's some neat things you can get. Your present working directory is a, essentially a global variable with dollar sign, which means it's a variable, and then present working directory. Uh, and that's a fun little one. Let's collapse this. So let's see. Do, do. Yeah, and here you can see that if the user gave me CD, then I was manually checking all of their arguments um, here and then same for LS. So I'm checking for dash A, dash LA, dash AL and so on. Um, but not necessarily the 
prettiest code, but it mostly works. So. Um, Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> There's like all the cats have different um, personalities and some of them will help you. Some of them will just tell you to go away. Some of them were willing to make trades. Like if you give it a bird, it will give you advice or whatever. But that's bash commands. The game is on my GitHub if you're really that excited about <laughs> playing. Well, it could be useful. I mean, it's not often that a book club comes with a game. Yeah, it's funny yeah. that. It was the um, an intro to Unix class, and that was the final project for everyone, and has been for as long as the class exists. That you have to make a game to teach bash commands. I think someone my year made like a Python dungeon crawler. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. All right. Um. So, uh, do I have it open? Yeah. Next week, we are going back into the uh, IT admin for data science section. Um, it's funny, like things have changed uh, a couple of times recently because he's still sorting out how he wants things to work. Um, but we will be doing chapter 11 now, which is basic Linux sysadmin. Um, and we can talk about it in the chat, but Right as of the last time I looked, let's see. Yeah, no one has signed up yet. I'll I'll be sure to be ready if uh, if no one wants to grab it. Um, but technically, I just did or I did the chapter right before this. So um, if someone else wants to play it in Amazon, that would be fine. I don't know how much I, I haven't looked at this at all yet. How um, how much we're going to be doing, like on. Uh, I think we are going to be working on the an Amazon server uh, is the idea on an EC2, yeah. Um, so yeah, that should be fun. Um, in get back chapter, into the EC2 uh, side. Oh. In what chapter uh, we're going to AWS? So chapter 10, which uh, was, let's see, when I covered it, uh, I don't have it written, but it was chapter five, six, something like that. Um, so that is uh, coming up, or that we did that already. Uh, it is now chapter 10. He, he changed things like right as we got to it. So very confusing where we were, but chapter 10 is the first AWS chapter. He has just setting up a really basic um, EC2 in there. Um, and I also walked through it in the video. So if you want to go back and see that. Um, and I think he has done some improvement on it since we did it because I had some questions or some comments that he uh, implemented. So yeah, then we'll be doing this basic Linux system in next week. Um, it'll just be, it's kind of a combination of what we just saw and specifically doing so on a server and like how to, um, add users and give permissions and different things like that. Um, and obviously I don't know what all, cause I haven't read it yet. Um, Is there like um, a project club next week or not? No, so, okay, let's see the dates are, we've got two weeks of two more weeks of this club. So we have a nice three week run. Um, so chapter 11 and chapter 12, and then there's project club. And then two weeks of daylight savings craziness where we just shut down the clubs because time is insane for those two weeks. Then we'll be back for one week and then it's project club again. So uh, coming up in March, we only have one meeting in March. Um, but yeah, that's all on the, the schedule, uh, which is linked in the channel in the volunteer to present folder. Um, but yeah, so next week, basic Linux sysadmin, we'll learn how to make some users, how to deal with permissions, all of that. Um, unless anyone has anything else, I will see everybody on Slack. It's, uh, yeah. it's good. Good. All right. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>